Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again. Before we begin the video, let me tell you about a few of my favorite YouTubers. And here they are. These are some of the best machine shop and shop videos that you'll find on YouTube. And be sure and uh, look them up and check out some of these videos, of course, after you have watched all of mine. Myford Boy actually refers to a Myford lathe, which is made in England. This Keith Fenner is absolutely fabulous, a craftsman, a machinist, welder, and he gives excellent explanations on how to do things, and his photography is great as well. Shop Dog Sam is quite a character. He deals uh, mainly with old engines and things like that, but uh, I think you really enjoy him if you haven't been watching him. And Train Man is uh, also a wonderful machinist and he builds uh, locomotives and train related uh, products but is an excellent machinist and ex explains things very well. The subject of this video is tailstock alignment and I know I've done this before by some other methods and I probably beat the subject to death but if you'll bear with me I'm going to show you what amounts to my favorite method and probably the quickest method to do this and that's with the test bar. The problem is that these test bars uh, are very expensive. They're sixty, eighty, a hundred dollars on eBay and they have to be very accurate or you might as well not bother doing it all. In uh, an upcoming video if there's enough demand I'm going to show you how to make an accurate one but uh, if it isn't, uh, if you can't make it real accurate, don't bother because uh, it's all is for naught. Now your test bar doesn't have to be this long. This is 12 inches long and it's 1 inch in diameter. But the one I have on the lathe is 12 inches long and 3 quarter in diameter, which is quite sufficient. And this is made of drill rod. The uh, rod must be perfectly straight and perfectly round. So cold rolled steel just isn't going to do the job. Many of these are ground on a cylindrical grinder, but uh, we have center holes in each end and these are accurate center holes and just sticking this in a chuck on the lathe and drilling center holes will not do the job. So let's step back to the Atlas lathe and I'll show you how to do that. But this can be done on any brand of lathe but I'm going to use the Atlas Craftsman because there's an awful lot of those out in basement shops. Here we are with the Atlas lathe looking toward the tail sock and the joker is there looking at it too. And all lathes are made with their tail stocks in two pieces as indicated right here. Now in order to cut a taper one of the methods is the offset tail stock method which is to loosen up the set screws and move the top over one way or the other and that allows you to turn a taper. But in, in reality we are offer, often turning a taper inadvertently. And from time to time you need to check your tailstock alignment to make sure that uh, these little lines are truly in, uh, in alignment. And that's just uh, a benchmark there. Uh, it's not accurate enough just to uh, go by that. You really need to indicate it. That, that's good ballpark for general use, but if you have an indicator and a test bar, you need to do what I'm going to show you now. Now, on a tailstock, there's a set screw on each side. This is a slotted set screw for a screwdriver. I don't like that. The other lathes have uh, socket heads for uh, Allen wrench. I went down to the uh, hardware store today and you know the woman, uh, the bearded woman, the lady with the mustache has retired and she's gone but there was a man with real bad breath and I had him look in those little drawers and uh, they didn't have long enough screws. These need to be about two inches long but I guess I got sidetracked there a little bit. But those are the two screws that you can work one against the other and move the top of the tail stock back and forth. The joker is checking out this tail stock and what he sees here is that the index lines are way off. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, go back and set them 
together, but that will not be accurate enough, and then we'll start indicating. In order to set these now, make sure that the tailstock clamp, that is what locks it to the bed, is loose. You cannot move it back and forth if you've got that locked. I'm going to do that now, and then I'll meet you uh, over at the lathe. Using two stubby screwdrivers, notice my hand in the back of the lathe and the other hand in the front. I can move these back and forth against each other and bring it into alignment while I'm watching my indicator. So that's what I'll be doing. And that won't always be in the video, but that is what I'm doing when the tail sock clamp is loose. It is also very important that your centers are accurate and not damaged and you have cleaned out the bore with your fingers and a rag and, and then uh, tap the sleeve and the center back in because if there's a chip in there or any other debris that causes uh, the center to be uh, slightly off then again you're doing uh, no good here. And the same thing on the tailstock. Be sure and clean out the quill and then install a good center. As far as indicators are concerned, I do not favor this magnetic base one because it's kind of big and clumsy in the way, but they certainly will work. But uh, if you can find a good place to, uh, to set it and it doesn't interfere with all the chips and the gather chips, but uh, you use this if you want. Uh, this one has more range than what we need, but I prefer a plunger type indicator, that, and I made this little uh, holder just a piece of aluminum, it could be steel, and uh, there's just hole in, in there, uh, and I'll tighten that down. We don't have a whole lot of travel here, but we don't need much. And this will be held directly in the rocker tool post. The indicator is in the tool po post, and it's uh, perpendicular to the work, and I've checked it to see that it's uh, pretty much on center and make sure you have enough travel back and forth so you can cover most of the length of the test bar. That's why I don't care for the magnetic base indicator because it's usually setting on one side or the other and you don't have full range which is a problem especially if your test bar is shorter than what I've got here and again this is a 12 incher. And here we go. I do have the tailstock clamped now and I went in there and I I lined the centers as well as I could with the index mark and let's see how close it is. The indicator is mounted and I'm going to feed the cross feed in so I have about a full revolution of travel approximately. Bring it into zero or bring your, your dial around to zero however you like to do it. And then we're going to run it down toward the tail stock. Okay the indicator is on zero. And I'm moving the carriage down as close as I can get it to the tailstock and we are about five thousandths off. So if we were turning a, a piece of steel 12 inches long we would have a, a five thousandths taper. Not five degrees but five thousandths taper from one end to the other. Let's see if we can zoom in on that a little bit to show you. See there's a five thousandths taper. Or the, I should say that the tailstock is out of line by five thousandths. So what I'm going to do now is to move the uh, tailstock over five thousandths and I have to unlock it in order to do that. I'm now going to move the top half of the tailstock away from me with the set screws. See the the needle and then I'm tightening the back one up against the front one. Now I'm going to lock the tailstock which is out of camera range. You, you say, may see it move a little bit but I don't believe it did. So we're right on zero now and I'm going to run toward the headstock now and see if we are in a line or if we have to make a little bit of a correction. Sometimes you have to do it more than once. I am moving the carriage toward the headstock and can you see that it's staying right on zero. 
Let's zoom and see what we got. Camera angle is a little bit funny here, but we are on zero. And you can go back and forth a couple times and make sure that you really got it. Make sure that your tail stock is clamped and that your centers are, uh, your tail stock quill is pushed up tight. And now what I've shown you here, and now we're in perfect alignment, or darn near perfect alignment. I'm not sure there's anything this perfect, but I would uh, go back and forth a couple times. What everything I showed you can be done really in five minutes or less if you have this test bar and you have a little indicator holder made. So it's it's really not very hard at all. It took me a lot longer to explain it than it, I would be able to do it much faster if I was just doing it on my own. Another view of it, moving back across the test bar toward the tailstock, and it stays on zero. Thanks for watching. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.